Hi guys, welcome back. It's winter and as you can see the, the fig trees here are almost completely leafless. Basically if I knock these over with a with a broom or rake they'll all fall but I let them fall naturally. Just less work to do. So now that we're in uh, winter we have our trees protected. Not the black sapote. The chocolate pudding fruit tree doesn't need winter protection. I've had a lot of questions recently. Can I have this tree out in winter? Can I have that tree out in winter? Guys, it's the true tropicals that you can't have out in winter here in Melbourne. The black sapote is not a true tropical. <coughs> it's a subtropical. The subtropicals can take Melbourne's winter. When they're young, they need to be, be protected. But when they're five, six, seven, and ten years old, like this one, zero protection. Even if we get a hailstorm, right, and zero Celsius, even minus one Celsius, this guy will still continue fruiting and give us fruit. Remember that. Okay? The black sapote, the white sapote, Almost all the sapotis, except for mamei. Mamei sapoti, different ball game. It's a true tropical. So in today's video, I just want to show you guys what I'm talking about as far as protection. These guys here are the true tropicals. Well, there's a mix of them, right? There's a mix of subtropical, tropical at various um, ages. So firstly, the mangoes, which can take Melbourne's winter, but, there's a but. The but is, they'll be set back. And there's a risk that they'll be, um, that they'll die when they're young. When I say young, young is one and two years old. One and two years old is young for mango. When they get to three years old, then it's, a, it's still a good idea to protect them, but they won't die out in the um, exposed space but it's a it's a good idea to protect them for three years and that applies to almost every subtropical such as achacha right achacha these are only a year old achacha needs protection um this guy here forgot his name now the um chestnut um uh, <clears throat> Malabar. Malabar chestnut. I don't know anything about this tree, so instead of taking a risk, I've decided to protect him, even though he's, um, he's got a bit of old wood there at the bottom, but that's not enough. The rest of him is just green. So I want to give him one more year of protection. One more winter, that is. Well, this is his first winter in Melbourne. This previous winter was in Queensland or um, northern New South Wales. So, he's protected. This here is the... Again, guys, you'll have, I'll, you'll have to excuse me for not remembering the name of all my trees. Rose apple. The rose apple also can survive Melbourne's winter. But, again, because he's only two years old, this is the second year, I decided to protect him. Next year, I might even plant him in the ground. Right? And the one behind him, again, <laughs> I need to look at the label. I put all these in two weeks ago. Allspice. Okay, I've got one allspice here and one allspice there. This allspice copped, not cold damage, but um, heat damage in summer. So this guy needs to be protected not only in, in winter, but in summer also, when he's young. We're talking the first two years, not fifth year. Fifth year, he can take anything, but preferably he likes shade. Okay? And then we got um, a few other exotics, such as the Maticia, right, with the beautiful leaves. And you can tell from the beautiful leaves, he doesn't like cold. You, you don't need to be uh, an expert to figure out this guy needs protection with these big fat leaves. Look at the size of them. And of course the lychee, is that a lychee? 
Oh, Longan. The Longan also doesn't need protection in winter. But I decided to protect him. What you're looking at there, again, is uh, summer damage. Yeah, he got burnt. This is all summer damage. The same with that guy there. That's the... Let's have a look at him. That's the... It says meringue, but it's definitely not a meringue. That's Ross Creek's um, little mistake there with the label. That's the... Uh... Gee, I've got to remember the name now. Gee, the name's not coming to me. Anyway, it's related to the mango. And he needs protection too, of course, for the first couple of years. So, star fruit also does not need protection in Melbourne in winter. But it's a good idea at this age, one year old, one, to protect him. Look at this guy losing his leaves here. In one week, look how many leaves have dropped. Um, they're all dropping. Right? They're all dropping. I'm doing him a favor. And the leaves look very healthy, but they're still falling. What tree is this? Blackberry jam fruit tree. Wow, this is the young one. I've got two of them. So the young one, which is again a year old, he's dropping all his leaves. But look what's going on here. He's getting new new growth. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's new growth or not. Looks like it is. Yeah. So protect, protect, protect. So that's this greenhouse. I've also got a, a pink wax jamboo there. Two of them. Another one under there. They're all packed in tight. Right? And what else do I have in here? I think that's pretty much it. Might be one I forgot. So that's the greenhouse here, greenhouse number one. Oh yeah, I also um, watered them all and um, gave them sea salt, a spray of sea salt today in the morning around 11 a.m. Right? That's why they're all wet. <laughs> Rain did not get in here. It's me watering them um, for their once a month um, sea salt application in winter. So the beginning of winter, the middle of winter, and the end of winter, I give him sea salt. And that's it. No more watering. No other watering other than those three times in winter. Once a month, and that's enough for um, tropicals in captivity, not outside here. He out here, it rains every day. You don't water anything outside in winter. But in here you do. Okay, let's move on to the next greenhouse. Oh, and before I go, I'll leave the door open about four, five inches, five inches, so it breathes. That reduces the uh, chance of humidity and um, bugs building up in there over winter. Okay. The next greenhouse is this pop-up that I have under the pergola, right? I was asked by uh, a viewer how my, my um, greenhouse is doing. It's doing great. This greenhouse, even though it's the cheapest material, right, that you can buy, it's only $100. Not, you, you can probably get it for $90 if you search around. Even though it's the cheapest and weakest greenhouse you can buy, it's going to last longer than my other greenhouses that, that cost me... Uh, 200 and 500 and a thousand dollars why because it's getting protected guys look it's not getting any rain from over there nothing it's dry dry as a bone so if, if the water doesn't touch it and the wind doesn't touch it you can't get much wind because um well the wind's up there right it's up there in there it's not down here very rarely there's a wind storm crash into this area very rarely and when it does it tries to lift up this rug but i've got pots on either side right so this rug being blown away well blown away blown to that corner there or to this corner here that's the worst damage that occurs here when we have 100 kilometer an hour winds zero effect on this guy 
So my answer is uh, the greenhouse is great. This greenhouse, this cheap greenhouse is wonderful if you can tuck it away. If you can tuck it away. If you're going to have it out there, I've got a different answer for you. The answer is good luck in um, towing it down or stabilizing it because it's going to blow it's going to blow away the first day when the winds exceed 60. Okay, so greenhouse number 2 is super jam packed. Oops, sorry. Super jam packed mainly with these chamber decks which I'm not um, confident about. I put them in too late. They should have been put in at the end of April. I was two weeks late. I put them in in the middle of May. Those two weeks uh, are going to be the make and break. And, and, and it looks like it's going to be the, the break. It's going to break them. They're not healthy at all. They're very, very uh, sickly. Well, I'll wait and see what happens. Right? That's the champa deck seedlings. There's about 30 of them. Look at them. See that? And under there too. And all, 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 all over the, um, the greenhouse on these two racks and these two shelves. Okay, other than those guys, um, just a moment, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, as I was saying, these are the main um, group of trees that I have in the middle here. And at the back there are the super sensitive ones, right? The super duper sensitive ones. I'm not going to go through all the trees, but just a general idea. Basically the same as what I did last year, guys. Okay? Um, Canistel, Mamey, uh, just um, a mix. Amla, um, yeah. <clears throat> Madrono. Okay, so that's this greenhouse. The um, passion fruit there. The, the one I got recently at the um, beginning of autumn. So that's greenhouse number two for winter protection. And for win um Oh, as you can see here, I put down um, uh, mulch where the veggies were, the tomatoes and zucchinis, right? So I don't get weeds over winter. I do this every winter around the silver beet, around the eggplants. Protection from weeds, which are a pain. And here, guys, is uh, greenhouse number three with the um, papayas. These are, these are pretty advanced. Uh, well, the papayas are only in their first year. But the um, Panama berry or Jamaica cherry, they're in their second year. And the Brazilian, not the Brazilian, the uh, Barbados cherry is in its second year. But uh, they're pretty advanced for two, for two years. And the Mamey is in its third year. And these were also doused with um, sea salt this morning. And underneath, I've got all the little ones, right? All around in there. So there's a peanut butter, which is giving me nothing but problems. Not this one, but the last three I had. This one seems to be happy right now with new growth. But this is very prone to um, aphids in, uh, in winter, this guy. And so are some of the other ones. So we'll see how we go this winter with the uh, greenhouse plants. So that's the video on the, the winter protection on the tropicals in the three greenhouses for 2022. And this greenhouse is in its second year. So far, so good. There hasn't been any sign of damage at all. I keep the flaps on this side closed and the flaps on this side here open, right? So I can breathe. Because some days in winter it can be it can be 20 Celsius, which means 30 Celsius in here 
if the flaps are closed. And we don't want that. We don't want the temperature to go above 25, 24, 25 um, uh, when uh, I'm not home. So we, wanna, we want the soil to be moist, not damp, but moist in winter. So you want some air in here to keep things um, circulating. So that's all done with uh, with him, right? So there are all the greenhouse plants protected. There are a few that are left um, out under the trees for um, um, canopy protection, but I'll be sharing those plants, those trees in another video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you from the next video, guys. Brrr. Oh my gosh, it's winter. <laughs> it's winter. Bye.